All right, friends, welcome back to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. I'm Tanner. And a couple weeks ago, if you guys were tuned in, uh, you helped us design this. Yeah, so we, we went through the process of laying out a circuit board, kind of making all the electrical connections, and then placing the order with a, a, a board manufacturer like JLCPCB. Awesome. Now, our goal with this video here is to not only show you guys how to design, how to tune, but today we're gonna also be taking you through a little bit of soldering 101. Yep. Just the basics of what you need, the tools, some techniques you can do, and what to look for to have a good soldering experience. Uh, Tanner has been a dear part of the flight test family for a long time. You run a company called Tritium Studios where you actually live in this world. You put components on these kind of boards. Yeah, we do. We um, we have a manufacturing facility where we, we take a, a blank circuit board from JLC or other manufacturers. We, we put components on them at, um, in a mass production kind of way. Awesome. So Tanner is going to be our partner through this whole journey here. He's going to start here, but we're going to be growing with this. So today we're going to be showing you how to solder this together. We mentioned earlier that this was going to be for a spear. We're going to put some simple LED lights in it and also a power lead here so we can install this in our spear, kind of show you how you do it at home and along the way, give you some tips and tricks on what to look for. What do you say? You want to put some LEDs on this? Let's do it. All right. So they arrived in the mail. I don't know, maybe a week and a half, maybe, maybe a little less than that. I can't fathom something can go from concept to reality and shipped here in under two weeks. Yeah, and we got we got a bag of yeah. five of them, so we're ready to ready to put them together and, and stick them on an airplane. It. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with what we did in the past video, we we're taking you step by step, and we're slowly building a video tutorial here to show you how to design with circuit boards. Now, this is really important if you're building model airplanes because now you can take something like our beloved Spear and you can make a circuit board like this and you can drop it right in. The function and the form is gonna be exactly what you want and you design it to be. Uh, today we're gonna to be showing you how to do some soldering techniques to kind of complete this out because this is just a PCB board. This does nothing on its own. Right, yeah, so the next step is if we were gonna put components on it, we'd have yeah. to you know, lay out those components, put them in the right place, solder them, um, and then connect our, our you know, external wiring, connectors, yeah. whatever. Um, in this case, this is a really simple board. We don't have to put any components on it. No. It's just a matter of wiring up our LED lights and our power supply input and going yeah. from there. What this is basically called is a, is a power distribution board. We're gonna yep. put power in from one source. We're gonna divvy it out. In this case, it's gonna be for LED lights. It could be for FPV gear, many different functions here. Uh, this is just a common, simple thing that you know most hobbyists may wanna do. Now, typically, if you went out in the industry, you'd kind of be stuck with you know 33 millimeter by 33 millimeter and some kind of generic sizes. This gives you the flexibility to do exactly what you want to do. And uh, why don't you go ahead and take us through the process because we've done different video tutorials on soldering before, um, but we never had a guy that knows how to do it and does it for a career, so. <laughs> yeah, so I, one of the things is there's a lot of different equipment that you could maybe use for putting something like this together. And, mm -hmm. and there, it goes all the way from one end of the spectrum, which is having you know a low cost, maybe $15 soldering iron, yeah. all the way up to soldering stations that cost it's multi thousands of dollars yeah. and machines that can assemble these boards um, automatically. Yeah. So we're going to kind of start on the low end, of course. Yeah. And um, and this is assuming you know that you're a hobbyist and you want to put something together at home. Um, I personally like a soldering iron that has a temperature control to it. That way you can you can get how much set how much power you're getting and okay. and everything else. Um, here we have this is a Heiko um, 888 soldering station, which is. Uh, you know, a, a popular system. Yeah. Um, it's Love one of my favorites. Uh, that's a great system, but there's also inexpensive, you know, just plug in 10 to $15 soldering irons. Very good. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is some solder. There's two different types. There's primarily two different types. Uh, one is um, leaded. That one's a little bit easier to use. It kind of flows a little nicer, but it has the downside of, of containing a, a large percentage of lead. Yeah. Um, the fumes are harmful, things like that. So. I generally recommend a lead-free solder, and I recommend one that has flux in it, so it would be a, a flux core or a flux containing solder. So with that said, um, the next step is to prepare your wires that you're connecting to your circuit board and uh, to put them in place. With these, we've already stripped them, and, uh, and one thing you can do is if you strip wire, you might get frays. Um, you can twist those frays up, and then um, once you've done that, you can do what's called tinning. And so tinning is just taking the soldering iron and running it down the wire with a little bit of solder to hold those frayed pieces of, of wire together. That's really important too that you tighten this up because oftentimes if you kind of have wire and you strip it and it's just kind of a big frayed mess, uh, it's not gonna give you a nice solder job. It's not gonna flow in very well because there's air pockets in there and those air pockets will insulate it and it's just not gonna pull through. So make sure you get a nice tight twist, right? Yeah, so I, I, tend, to, I tend to give it a couple quick turns and then, um, 
And then, you know, like I said, if you just bring the soldering iron in, heat the wire up a little bit, add just a little bit of solder, and that, that's it. I mean, you, you almost can't see that there's solder on that wire, Yeah. but it's enough to hold the, the fraying together. You don't want a big blob or anything like that. The other common mistake I see with, with people that are starting out in soldering or just learning is, is they'll try and, they'll take the iron and they'll try and put a bunch of solder here and then try and transfer it to the board. Or they'll try and um, you know bring the iron over and then kind of push the solder off with the wire. Um, actually, the best way to solder is to uh, put your iron on whatever it is you're soldering and then come in later once it's warmed up and add your solder wire. What's the temperature range that you're gonna run your soldering on? Um, it depends kind of on your skill level and, and also on your different types of solder. So some solders melt at lower temperatures. I think this melts at around 350 Celsius. Okay. Um, so it's, it's pretty hot. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're kind of just getting started, I would start with the lowest temperature that you can get away with. Um, that, that doesn't, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to damage the board by keeping too much heat on it. Yeah. So I would start small and then move your way up as you get more skilled and you can start to work faster. Very good. Yeah, oftentimes so. if you have too much heat, you can pull the tracer right off the board. If you're soldering like a control board for a multi-rotor or something, you'll just boil that, that tracer right off. Yeah, so what you have to remember is is that copper is, is just being glued onto the circuit board and uh, that glue breaks down at a temperature. So as you heat that, that trace up and that, that heat travels through the copper and into that glue, you can start to lift that trace off the circuit board. And there's no way you're going to repair it. Nope, then it's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> Found out the hard Throw way. it out and order a new one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, for this, I'm just going to go ahead and put these, uh, these wires um, in the holes here. And I'm lining up my ground and my positive with uh, the labels that we put on the board. I'm just going to do one at a time because that's going to be the easiest. Keeping the tip clean is really important. Uh, you know, you don't want the solder to sit on there for a long period of time. Yeah. So, so you want to you want to keep it clean, but you also do want just a little bit on the surface so that you get this nice shiny look. And you can see I started by adding the soldering iron first, then I brought the solder wire in, and that created this nice joint. Now, what you want to see for a good solder joint is you don't want to see something really dull or something kind of fuzzy or hairy. You want to see a nice shiny joint, right? Yeah, so the shine isn't as important as, as what you want to see is a, um, a joint that, that flows from the tip of the point yeah. down to the pad on the circuit board. And you want that nice curve and that nice shape. So that's that's called wetting the whole area. You want to wet the wire and you mm -hmm. want to or the pin that's coming through the circuit board and you want to wet the pad that it's sitting on. That means everything's pretty much been heated properly. And if it looks like a ball, that means maybe your wire took it, but your circuit board didn't, correct? Yeah, so that's another common defect is you'll see a, a ball of solder. And what, what can happen in that situation is that the the um, it's not actually making a good connection. It may not be making a connection at all. So that, because that, that ball underneath isn't touching the contact on the bottom. Gotcha. So now right. the next step is we're gonna go ahead and solder the, um, the first power connector here. This is so we can connect our battery to this board. Yep. Now if you're using any of our radial power packs that have the FTESCs in them, we have an accessory port that is a red JST that has the battery end for it. The nice thing about that is you can use that accessory to put battery voltage right to this power distribution board. Now for the Spear specifically, that's really handy because basically we can plug it in and when you plug in your main battery, it's not only going to power your electronics, but it's also going to feed off that accessory port and power into your LED light. So say you want to disconnect it and fly during the day, you can easily do so. So Josh, you'll remember when we designed this board in yeah. the last episode, I put a version number on it. And yeah. I said I said we were gonna we we're gonna put a version number there in case we want to make changes in the future. Yeah. I've already found the first change we need to make. The holes on our battery connector are not large enough for these wires. <laughs> okay. So that's my mistake, but yeah. we'll have to fix that in version two. But you can surface mount that, right? We can. So what we're gonna do instead, um, because I can't get these wires to actually go through the hole, is. We'll lay them on here at 90 degrees to the circuit board. Okay. And we'll solder them that way. We just need to be careful that we don't end up with a short circuit there. So to do this, I, I find that the best way is to is to actually put a little bit of solder on the on the connection first. And this isn't really the the let's call it the correct way to solder yeah. this on. But um, if we're not going to be able to go through that hole, we don't have anything to kind of mechanically hold the wire in place while we're soldering it. This is going to make um, doing this a little bit more. You're making more of a solid pad now. Yeah, yep, we're trying to make it a solid pad so I can just come in from the side. For a general hobbyist, what kind of solder would you recommend? Um, I use lead free that is uh, primarily silver. Usually okay. there's silver and copper. 
Um, it's like maybe 96 to 98 percent silver. Okay. Um, that's what I would use for most hobby stuff. Is that where those ratios kind of play in the mouth when you oftentimes see the ratios on the side of your solder? Yeah, so um, a lot of solders will spec that out what the ratio of, uh, you know, if it's lead or if it's mm -hmm. tin or if it's copper or silver. Um, They'll, they'll give numbers. Uh, for example, one of these leaded solders is um, SN63 PB37, and that means those are the, those are the element symbols. So it's 63% tin, 37% lead. Gotcha. So I've soldered that connector on now, and we'll go ahead and do a light for the other wing. Fantastic. Now this specific board, the really cool thing is the design's done. We can include a link to it below if someone wants to order this. They can actually order it through JLC PCB, right? Yeah, so we'll actually, um, we'll send the files over, we'll put them yeah. in the in the link below so that anybody yeah. can download it and, and order it. Perfect. So the really cool thing is this will fit into minis, it'll fit into swappables. This doesn't just have to fit into the spear, and this is gonna be really useful for something to say you wanna run it out to the wings, you wanna run it to the fuselage, you have plenty of ports to run your voltages, specifically for light, but this could also be used for FPV. Now one important step before you put any power to this is if you have a multimeter, which basically tells you voltage, uh, continuity, things like that, it's a really good thing. You can get them as low as five bucks. Yeah, they're not expensive. Um, I mean, if you don't have one, you can always do kind of a very careful visual inspection of your solder joints and yeah. all your connections. But um, if you have one, it's great to go through and check. This is set up on diode mode. Mm -hmm. So in diode mode, it's checking for a connection. If they're apart, nothing if you put them together you get a beep and it's yep. saying okay now they're connected and you can just go right to the board we can check right here and those and two aren't connected and just to verify this if we go to any of the positive connections i've got this on the positive here and here we get a beep but none of the grounds are so with the way that this circuit is all the grounds are connected all the positives yep. are connected so that simple check actually checks all of our connections and we can do the same with the ground side this gives you confidence that you're not gonna have any sparks. We are good to power this Yeah, off. let's do it. Let's get a battery. Love it. All right, so we got a little battery right here. We can test this right off the, off the unit. Three, two, one. There it is. Amber on one side, green on the other. No sparks. No sparks either. All right, so the benefit of this is that we looked to design for our little spear here is now we have the ability, we can run LEDs, we can run our FPV gear all off one connection. And again, we're using our simple 35 amp ESC with the accessory port plugged in. So Tanner, this is an easy project. Yeah, it's, I mean, from start to finish, we had maybe 15 minutes in designing the circuit board. Yeah. Once it came here, we have another 10 to 15 minutes in getting it all wired up, making sure it all works, soldering our wires, the whole, whole deal. And so. again, you can get about five of these for two bucks. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so you can design it, create it yourself, and get it shipped to you, and, and you have just, just very little amount of money. And it saves it. us having a big mess of wires in here. Keeps you know? the build clean. Mm -hmm. It keeps the build. As you guys grow in the hobby here, you know, things like keeping your build clean, accessories, and how you manage them is gonna be really important. Also, how you can make things modular. Imagine designing a circuit board where you have maybe one FPV unit and you need to power it. You can now use something like this to take it from one to the other, and you don't have to like desolder and solder in. You can make it serviceable, you can make it modular, you can do a whole bunch of different sure things. absolutely so hope this helped you i know this is kind of like soldering one-on-one some basics but a lot of our community is new uh, we've been blessed with so many new subscribers we really want to make sure that we cover the techniques not only of building and flying but also all the parts of the hobby that are included in between it and uh tanner thank you so much for oh, helping us out with this my pleasure as always leave your comment down below if there's a project that you'd love to see on one of your model airplanes here leave it in the comment below so we could read it so we can design around that and then share not only the build journey, but also those files with you. Uh, as always, thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Tanner, thank you for helping. Oh, it's my pleasure. And big thanks to JLC PCB for kind of introducing this new chapter here where we can live in it. I can't wait for our next project. Yeah, me neither. I'm looking forward to it. All right, we'll see you next time.